مدنين غدومش غدومش وارزين ياه
His Excellency Jean-Pierre Kachapatanga, <laughs> um, Ambassador of the Republic of Rwanda. Without further ado, I would like to present the floor to Her Excellency Ambassador Miriam Black to share a few words with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. I would like to certainly welcome all of you, uh, honorable judges, uh, excellencies, colleagues, heads of international organizations, friends <coughs> of East Africa. I think it's a great pleasure to see all of you here in such big numbers. Um, I am the ambassador based in Brussels and I'm accredited to the country of the Benelux and the only country in East Africa that doesn't have a presence in the Hague yet. <laughs> I hope my government will also hear this <laughs> so that they can at least establish an embassy. Um, no, we're very proud to be here. It is my task to explain you a little bit on the background. I would like to give you a few words of historical background to the East African community. I'm always proud to say that East African Union, which was established in 1967, uh, established between the three countries, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, yeah, it, it was actually more integrated than the European Union is now. We had one currency, one passport, no borders, one railway, one uh, yeah, airline, one, yeah, one, uh, one bank, central bank. We had everything. And then due to a political fallout between the then leaders, I'm not proud to say that maybe my former president, Idi Amin, was one of the causes of the breakup of this African Union. So when you break up something, you know how long it takes to build it up again. It took us 23 years to come to the conclusion we can't do without each other. Because it is in our mutual interest that we establish something similar to what we had. Especially with regard to customs regulations, you know. It takes a truck at the border of Kenya like three, four days to clear the stuff and it just doesn't help anybody to be so bureaucratic. So we said let's just first handle our customs union and so we do away, so we are phasing out all the rates and everything. We set up an East African Legislative Assembly, so that is basically an East African Parliament. We have also set up an East African Court of Justice, and we are going to integrate more and more. And eventually, but it's a little bit of the future, is a political federation, because we are very happy that the countries like um, Burundi and Rwanda joined us after we had established the East African community. And really the membership is open to more countries in our region because we feel that through economic integration we can actually learn to survive. We consist of 150 million people, so it's very important that we are going to make regulations that are going to be similar to what the European Union has and this is what, uh, what our future will hold for us. Now, it's not my task to talk long because it's a reception. I will soon give um, the floor to uh, my colleague, Rose uh, Makena Muchiri, to talk more. I just thought I'll give you some background. I would like you to come all and visit our three most beautiful countries because it's really worth a visit. For those of you who have visited one, you should go to all three. So, please, Karibu means feel welcome. Thank you, thank you, sorry, my voice is a little gone today, of all the days that it has gone. But my fellow ambassadors and co-hosts, um, distinguished guests, judges, our fellow colleagues, let me welcome you most warmly to this uh, function. In Kiswahili, which we all speak, uh, and I'll say, Kariboni. And you say Asante. <laughs> Asante Sana. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this evening really uh, marks for us um, a combination of many days. Our governments came together uh, and decided that we want, while we are looking at the future, the Federal uh, Federation of East Africa, it is at this point that we want to integrate more in the sector. Uh, aspects of our, you know, the financial sectors, 
the, the economic sectors as well, and the tourism sector for East Africa is a major uh, area of integration and is a, a major area for growth. It is also very important for us because it brings in uh, foreign exchange, which for a lot of us really keeps us going and keeps our economy going. So as we do the trade, as we do this, the tourism is very important, and that is why our governments this year began, came together and decided that we are going to have uh, East Africa tourist visa so that we can make the experience a more integrated experience for our visitors. We also noticed that the visitors that came to Kenya, came to, to, to any one of our countries, would have liked to have an experience in another of the other countries. So we decided why don't we make it possible for them. And our governments, our presidents got together and they launched this in February uh, this year. I know a lot of our friends and my brother is here from Tanzania asking, but where is your colleague? Our colleague is coming. He's coming. <laughs> Our colleague is coming. But the treaty allows us to do things progressively, as and when you are ready. And so when Tanzania and Burundi are ready, they are going to join us. We are also looking at expanding our community, and I see our brother from Sudan. As soon as the next one comes, you will be next. So the community is growing, and uh, really I want to, as my sister Miriam said, I want to say this. This region is a beautiful region. Whatever else you may read and say, it is one of the most serene environment from the Maasai Mara to the um, Kivu, uh, to the U Uganda and wildlife, and even just nice weather. Uh, actually, let me say that the roads in that part of the world are air conditioned. <laughs> Please watch, we have a bit of it on the video. We have some brochures here. I'm not going to talk about the money because the Rwandese are better at that. <laughs> and uh, I'll take this opportunity to call my brother to tell you why the tourist visa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador Rose. Excellencies, um, colleagues, ambassadors, and representatives of international organizations in the Hague, judges, uh, members of uh, Diplomat Magazine, our co-organizer, and uh, friends of Rwanda, friends of East Africa, Karibu Sana, you are welcome, most welcome, this evening to the East African evening. We are happy that you are here today. Um, I'm not going to talk too much because my colleagues actually explained everything about the history about uh, this event. Mine will be only to, maybe to be a bit technical, uh, maybe give more details about this, this African visa. Um, uh, today, when we are going to, uh, or before, when you, you are going to Rwanda, Kenya, or Uganda, you have to pay uh, $40 to each country, to Kenya, to Uganda, or to Rwanda, and uh, today, when you have to go to East Africa, you have only to pay $100, and you can get to all the three countries in one entry. So this allow all people or tourists going to Rwanda to be free to move around the three countries without uh, facing any bureau bureaucratic uh, tendencies and you can freely move around and this has been actually modeled like the uh, Schengen visa what we are enjoying today where you can enter one country and move around this many countries member state of uh, Schengen visa so we are happy that uh, you are here today and we invite you to join us to do it and enjoy and be our ambassadors, actually, 
ambassadors of ambassadors. We invite you to be ambassadors of ambassadors. You can talk around about these initiatives and actually invite more people. I know that many of you have been in East Africa, in Uganda, or in Rwanda, or in Kenya, but this time we invite you to come to visit the three countries at the same time, as we said, enjoy the safari in Kenya, enjoy uh, gorillas in uh, uh, mountain gorillas in Uganda and in Rwanda, and uh, enjoy also the, the Kivu at the same time. And uh, we are happy that you are here, and uh, I want to thank specifically the Carlton Hotel and uh, uh, Diplomat Magazine for being our partner this night. And, uh, I invite you to take advantage of this opportunity, really, really, to be among the first to visit East Africa now or tomorrow. So, most welcome, please feel free to ask any question or any technical uh, issue that you want to ask today. We are here for you to explain anything you want to hear today. So, enjoy your evening again. Asante san. Um, thank you very much, Excellencies. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few short minutes, in a few seconds actually, um, <laughs> this, as you see, is a flag of the East African community, incorporated. incorporating five countries thus far, as you have heard, and built on the strength of brotherly cooperation. And uh, it contains the culture, the colors, the history, the commitment, and the hope of that entire region. It is a five-pronged approach that works. Trust me, it does. Um, <laughs> at this moment, um, our ambassadors shall unveil the visa that shall give you access to three countries from any of their entry points. But ladies and gentlemen, we present the East African Tourist Visa. Now that we are still upstanding, um, raise your glasses in the air and uh, hip hip hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, that's the beautiful visa. We have another piece of it on the other side at the corner. And we have another one uh, right in front of us here.
my name is uh, Joris van Gautover. In English, George McGoldbank. My company is HR for Growth. And I'm going to be introduced by Eugene Matos. He's the one who organized this wonderful party. Uh, he's uh, the honorable consultant of the Do Dominican uh, Republic. And he's the one who organized these events. Uh, I think it's very important to show um, the, the, the positive initiatives and to make the connection, the cross-cultural connection between uh, the African countries and uh, the Netherlands. Uh, to uh, emphasize two chances which are uh, nowadays possible because of economic relations, because of uh, society relations. We need each other. Uh, we have, for example, many flower farms in Kenya and they are run by Dutch people. But if you look to the circumstances of women who work there, we can do much more to help, uh, to help the uh, people there having better wages, having better safe circumstances to work. So we need each other and we need, we need to uh, emphasize on negotiation, working together, instead of naming and shaming. Sir, so could you please uh, highlight uh, what, what you do in your business? What, what are the services you offer? My, my, my services of HR, of HR for Growth is I'm helping grow companies. For example, a company is entering the Dutch market. It starts as uh, one single person, as a uh, small enterprise. Yeah. Then after uh, maybe one year or two years, he or she will grow and then he needs to have uh, employees. Then he needs to know about uh, doing business in the Netherlands, the do's and the don'ts, what is possible in terms of contract. So I help uh, companies with advice on uh, executive search, on recruitment, on assessment. I help companies with training and development, cross-cultural aspects, how to deal with the Dutch. So they have more easy way to be successful, a successful building your successful business in the Netherlands. Developing people, building the business. I'm the man to help the companies in this, uh, in this process. Company, it's all the companies who need uh, who needs assistance yeah, yeah. To, ma to, to, make, to make it more easy. Yeah, because if you are uh, starting a business here in the Netherlands, you have many problems to solve. You have many uh, uh, chances to take. And therefore you need to have good trusted people who know, who have the expertise to have the network, who know uh, uh, the, the, the nitty gritty of the, of the Dutch yeah, situation. That's very important. So you can be more flexible, more, yeah. more successful. Yeah, when you have the right knowledge. Yeah. And that's also the reason this network of today is very important because you have a, a very wide variety of people. It's not only the, the network of the embassies, it's also uh, the, 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 the businessmen are also uh, represented here. You have the formal, uh, the formal uh, aspects of the government are here, all kinds of representatives and all these uh, different uh, cultural people and economically connected people, they can help each other. And it's not going by internet, it's, it's by having contact, yeah. meeting each other. Yeah. That's, really That's important. very important, otherwise uh, internet of course, it can be helpful, but it can never, it can never replace no. real communication. No, it can, yeah. you agree? Yeah, yeah. It has limitation. No, the internet has limitation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we need to, to, to talk to each other, yeah. to look in the eyes, to know, understand, to have a, to have a sense of humor, yeah. to drink a beer or wine, is <laughs> <laughs> very important. <laughs> 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 So 
So if I may ask, uh, yeah. have you been to East Africa before? Me not, but my wife has been a few times to Kenya okay. uh, because she works for a uh, non-governmental organization who helps uh, to, to, to make uh, the, the working uh, circumstances of women on the, on the flower farms to make it better. Okay, okay. It's connected to your work too. Not because to my work, but she, she is, yes, but it's connected yeah. to my work, yeah, exactly, yeah, yes. You, you, yes. you yes. try to let the company understand the working environment yeah. in which they need to place their workers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but the drive, to be productive. Exactly, exactly, but the drivers of these businessmen in, in Kenya, mm. which are the often profits. Dutch Dutch, uh, Dutch guys, mm. uh, they, they have only one focus, yeah. the profits. profits. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a short-term thinking. Yeah. It's not the way it should be. Yeah. It's not the way it should be. It's not sustainable thinking. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not.